All right then gang, so in the last video we saw how we could set up a simple version of a pagination like this where we have several different pages of data using React Query and this hook, use query and a query variable. Now there is a better way to do it using a different hook which is called use paginated query. So this hook is a bit like use query but it gives us a tailored approach best for pagination of data. So First of all, let me set all this up and then I'm going to explain exactly what it does. So first things first, let me delete this. We don't need to send this random string through to our fetch function anymore and also delete it from here. Now I'm going to replace this with use pagination query. So let me get rid of that and say use pagination query instead. It automatically imports it at the top and we no longer need use query because we're using this instead. Now this essentially does the same thing but it gives us slightly different values back here. It's still going to use this, this fetch planets under the hood to grab the data and we're still using a key and we can still pass through this query variable but instead of these two things we get three things that we're going to use. So well, let me delete those and the first thing that we get back is going to be the resolved data and I'll explain this in a second. We also get the latest data and we get the status as well. So then this time around instead of one single data item right here we have two and we have resolved data and latest data. So resolved data that is the last successfully fetched data that we have access to and this is the stuff we actually output in the template. Now the latest data right here, that is the actual data for any ongoing queries, not using cached data. So we have these two now, but how do they work in tandem? Well, when we get our first resolved data for the first page of results, we output that in the template. So we cycle through those and we output them in the template. Then if we request the next page of data, use paginated query right here, goes out and fetches that in the background for us. Now. The resolved data doesn't change at this point. Instead, the latest data, that value represents the new fetch that's going on in the background. Now, initially, while that fetch is ongoing, this value is undefined. But then when it's complete, it becomes that new data that we have. So once this data is complete, then the value of resolved data updates to match that latest data. And then again, we output that data to the template. So this way, the user continues to see the resolved data, the current data, until we have updated latest data. Then once that's ready, the resolved data updates and can be reflected in the template. So this makes for a really nice user experience. So let's use both of these now to create the template and functionality for this to work. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these three buttons. We don't need those anymore. And then also we need to come down here and instead of using data, we need to use resolved data. Now, if I was to save this and try to run it, it's not going to work. And it says greeting is not defined. And that must be because we're still using the greeting right here, which we don't have. So let's get rid of that. But also if I save again, it says data is not defined. And that's because we don't have data. We just have resolved data that we need to cycle through now. So let's change this to resolved data. So save that and preview and now we can see all of the data right here. Awesome. So that works. Now, the next thing we want to do is add some buttons so we can go to the next page or the previous page. So let me first of all, inside this status right here, do a fragment because this fragment is going to surround everything. Because again, when we use a template like this, it has to have one root element. So I can't put second elements right here, like a button, and then expect this to work. We need to have a root element that surrounds all of this. So let me do that. Let me do a fragment, which is basically an empty element to do this. And then inside that, we can add some buttons. So the first button right here, this is going to say previous page. And then we need another button after that. So let me copy that and paste it down here. And that's going to say next page. And I tell you what, in between those, we're going to output the page number as well. So let me do a span tag. And inside that, we're going to output the page, the current page we're on, which remember is being stored in this state. So to begin with is one. OK, then. So we need to hook up the functionality of the previous page button and the next page button. So 
I'm going to enter down onto the next line to do this because we're going to add a few different attributes. First of all, an on click event. So that is going to equal to a function. And inside this function, what do we want to do? Well, basically, we want to take one away from the page because we're going to the previous page. But we only want to do that if we have something which is bigger than one. So what I'm going to do is use a method right here, the set page method that we have to update the page. And inside here, we can fire a function which takes in the old or the current value. So to begin with, that would be one. So let me say this is the old value. And then inside this function, we can return a new value to update the state too. So to do that, I'm going to say math.max and pass in old minus one and then one. So what does this function do exactly? Well, this max method on the math object basically takes in two numbers and it returns the biggest one out of those two. So for example, if we have a page of three and we take that in here inside this function, we say three minus one, then that is going to be two and two is bigger than one. So it sets the state of page to be two, which is what we want the previous page. But if we're on page one and we come down here and say, okay, well, one take one is zero. There isn't a page zero, but it doesn't matter because zero is less than one and the max function takes the biggest of the two values. So it's still going to be one. So we can never go less than one, which is what we want. Okay. Now, if I go down to this next page button, we're also going to add an on click event to that. And this is also going to be a function which is going to set the page state. And again, we're going to fire a function to set this. But inside this one, we want to do something slightly different. So let me just paste this in and then explain this. So what we're doing is a ternary operator right here. We're evaluating something, first of all. And then if that evaluates to true, then we stick with the old value. We don't change it. If this evaluates to false, then we go with the new value, right? So what we're saying here is, look, if we don't have data or if we don't have a next property on that data, which remember down here is this thing. So if we don't have one of those, then we can't go to the next page, right? So basically, if any of this evaluates to false, then we're going to add one to the page. We'll go to the next page and we're evaluating it to false because we have these exclamation marks in front of it that negates the truth of value, right? So if we have a next page, this will be true, but this negates it to false. So if this is false, we want to add a page to it. If it's not false, it means we don't have this next property and we're going to stick with the old value. I hope that makes sense. So let's give this a whirl. I'm going to save it and close that down, then go to the next page. And you can see we get two and three and four, five. And notice we're not getting that loading little screen or little message above these results before they come in. And that's because we're always using the resolved data until the latest data gets back. And at that point, we can update it. So there is no loading, right? So that's a good user experience. Now, when we get to the last page, which is this, because there were 60 results, we can't go any further, right? Because that's all the results there are. And same down to one, we can't go any further back. Now, at this point, when we've reached the end, I want to maybe make these buttons disabled. So disabled, and I'm going to set that equal to if page is equal to one. So at that point, if page is equal to one, then this button is now disabled. We can't click it. And let's spell this correctly. Disabled. Okay, so same for this one down here. Disabled and set that equal to something. And this is going to be disabled if we don't have any latest data or we don't have the next value. So let me say latest data or latest Oops, let's spell this correctly. Latest data dot next. So if we don't have those, then this is going to be disabled because we can't go to the next set of results. So I'm going to save that and preview over here. And now if we go to six, it looks the same. But if we inspect this button right here and go to six, we can see it becomes disabled.
So why don't we style this a little bit differently when it's disabled by going to the index page and down here, pasting in this rule. So any button that is disabled now gets an opacity of 0.2, so it fades out and a cursor of not allowed, which is like a no entry sign. So if I save that and come back over here, if we go to page six, we can now see that this is disabled. Now, if we go back all the way to page one, this is disabled, right? Pretty good. Anyway, my friends, that is pretty much it for this series. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you like React Query. In my opinion, it's a really nice solution for asynchronous data management and it comes with some really good features. If you do want to learn how to do more with React Query, definitely check out the docs. There are more things we can do with it. So then my friends, I really, really hope you've enjoyed this series. And if you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot and it helps out an enormous amount. And if you do want to join the cause and support the channel, you can do by clicking the join button on the channel homepage or underneath the video right down below. You also get a little cool ninja badge next to your name in the comments for that. And it's 99 pence or cents per month. And I've also created several premium in-depth courses on Udemy. So the first one is Modern JavaScript. The second one is D3 and Firebase. And the third one is Vue.js and Firebase. So if you want to take one of those, all the links with the discounts automatically applied to them are going to be in the video description down below. So again, thanks so much for watching and I'm going to see you in the very next course.